All right, guys, it is early, and I am feeling much better. As a matter of fact, I didn't get as sick as my wife and my kids did, but uh, we had all been uh, spreading around the same old nastiness uh, for about two weeks now, so sorry for uh, being so slow with everything, and if I uh, <clears throat> stop to clear my throat and stuff, it's just because I've had a sore throat and fever, and <laughs> but I'm feeling much better today, so we'll get on with this, our Bigfoot encounter stories from the beautiful Pacific Northwest, and real quick, shout out to Julie. And Teresa uh, for winning the uh, Cryptid by Sarah Bergman coffee mug and the t-shirt from Linda Newton Perry. It's a little special bonus I was going to throw in there for you ladies out there. And uh, I want to say thank you guys very much for just being awesome listeners and everything else into uh, the PacWest Bigfoot. <clears throat> also, real quick, uh, PacWest Bigfoot, um, my PacWestBigfoot.com is back open. It's ready to go. Um, wanted to do some changes over there the last uh, two or three weeks and finally got it done. Um, actually, I have some new designs in there for t-shirts, uh, so you can check some of those out. Got a, a female kind of looking like she's in uh, walking through uh, uh, Bluff Creek there, so <clears throat> figured you could uh, check that out. Also, real quick, I'm going to start giving a shout out probably every week or every other week. I'm going to share it up on the uh, Facebook page for the uh, International Bigfoot uh uh, conference and film festival out in uh, I believe it's Ogden, Ogden, uh, uh, Utah, and so um, I'll get some more information on that here shortly. But uh, if you guys want to check that out, I'll be posting that up on the Facebook page later today, and you guys can share it out there, make it go viral, get it out there, get people over there, get them educated about a Bigfoot. Now, I may entertain and do a little bit of education here, but those guys over at the Interna International Bigfoot Conference, you get people like Woody on there, you're going to have uh, Mr. Gimlin out there, you can get uh, just all these brilliant people out there, uh, um, you know, speaking and talking and sharing, and I'll tell you what, the next thing you know, you walk away a whole lot more educated than we were before, all right? So let's get out there. Um, this week, for our Based on True Bigfoot encounter story from the beautiful Pacific Northwest. Bigfoot hunts along the outskirts of Rancher's property near Chamult, Oregon. <coughs> Clears throat. Mmm. Sips coffee. Mmm. Goes to an ear, nose, throat doctor. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right. <coughs> Let's do this. <coughs> I have a small farm near Chamult, Oregon, where I raise uh, some turkey chickens for eggs locally and of course a few cattle. I never expected however that Bigfoot would also be a part of the farm, but it was at least for a season back in 1991. <clears throat> I never put much stock into my into myths and fables, but this animal is not a myth. Bigfoot is real and they eat meat so that you know. I have seen what it can do to a deer and then once watched as it grabbed two of my turkeys and ran off with them. Here's what happened and what I know about the hunting habits of Bigfoot. There are hunters, then there are the hunted. Like I said, I have a small farm. I would not call it a ranch at all, not even close. I do enough business in cattle plus other meat and poultry to live comfortably out here near Chamult, Oregon, even today. I've been an Oregonian all my life, born and raised. I have heard of the stories of Bigfoot, after all. It is part of the culture here growing up. And while I have friends over the years experienced or have experienced with these things, I never had myself, at least not until the early fall of 1991. I was coming out of turkey season, <clears throat> and while I'm not uh, coming into turkey season, and while I'm not Butterpaw, <coughs> excuse me, I have regular customers wanting some of my many, many turkeys. I raised on the farm back then. Today is still, I still have chickens, cows, but the turkey had to go for financial reasons in the 2000s. Anyways, in the early fall of 91, I started hearing some pretty weird sounds at night, and that all led up to a couple of scary finds, including a couple of turkeys taken and eaten, and a sighting of a Bigfoot I'll never forget. Okay, maybe a nightmare is a little much, <clears throat> but what it did, what this thing is possibly capable of, is this stuff nightmares are made of for sure. Now I know why one American president called this thing a monster. Growls and screams in the dark. August through November are my busiest times of year. I make most of my money or income from the farm slash ranch between the end of summer and the end of fall. 
I was out one night gathering the cattle and driving them to a part of the property, a particular field, in fact, and separating the first cut from the rest. Now, like I said, I am not a ranch owner, per se, but I do have cattle, and enough uh, to have to know how to ranch and deal with cattle, period. But it was that particular early evening when I uh, heard the first of what would become commonplace vocalizations for nearly four to five weeks on and off. From screams to growls to whistles and grunts, I've heard every sound a Bigfoot can make, I believe. It happened almost daily, and for sure at least four or five nights out of the week. I had moved the last of the head of cattle I had to the front acres, and that is when, from the south along a ridge line, or a small range of mountains, came the most blood-curdling scream I'd ever heard. It started out low became very high-pitched like a woman or a mountain lion, which it was not. <clears throat> then became low again, but still a scream. And I have to say this, the end of that scream sounded human-like. It was pretty eerie, to tell you the truth. There it was, three times in a row. Whatever it was screaming from nearly two to three miles away on that ridgeline, and it echoed through the valley I and the land I owned sat in. Up to that point, I thought I'd heard everything the wilderness could give out. <clears throat> but this was something new, at least it was to me. The following evenings, hollering and screaming happened around the same time and came from the same general area and distance away. As I said, it happened on and off for several or so nights <clears throat> or early evenings. I have to say I was a little taken aback by the sound. Okay, I was a little freaked out by it. At least that is what younger folks might call it today. It was a couple of days after that when I heard something walking and a couple growls while out fishing near a stream that bordered my property. The beginning of fall has a great hatch up this way, and because of that, I love to hit the stream for some fly fishing and grab some brookies if I can. The stream itself runs and winds out around the outside of the property and through the woods. I had forgotten all about the screams a few days or so before and was out early one morning to fish a bit. It was, it was getting colder already by that point, and there was a mist coming off the stream, and beyond 30 yards or so, I could not see past at that time of the morning. I was there about 40 minutes and two brookies in when I heard someone approaching. It sounded like someone was walking right up to me from the other side of the stream. The closer it got, the heavier and non-human it sounded, however. <clears throat> Heavy footfall and... Eventually, well, it sounded like a growl and a grunt to follow was made from whomever or whatever it was walking close by. It was deep, too deep to be human for sure, and that is when a chill went down my back. I did not feel it like some have stated in their encounters, but boy did it sound crazy, and a lot like a deep low rumbling of a lion, I would say. Two grunts followed the deep growl. It was something I would never forget either. It kept walking towards me, but before I could see anything, it seemed to make a sharp turn right and walk off into the woods, but not after a pause. I swear he, them, it, whatever it was, stood there for a second and could see me, but I could not see it. I gathered myself together, grabbed what I caught up to that point, and without looking back, I took off and headed home. It was better to be safe out here than sorry, that's for sure. My friend the hunter. My good friend Garrett is a passionate hunter and fisherman. He has been all over the woods here, and just so you know, I called him because I believed he had mentioned some weirdness in the past he had experienced around the area. I was right, he had. Over coffee and some more fishing about three days after my weirdness, he told me about Bigfoot and his sighting about two decades ago along the same ridge line I was hearing the screams from earlier that week. His was a visual, uh, was a brief visual. It came running out of nowhere about 400 yards away and disappeared down into a tree line. But, even from that distance in the open, he knew what it was. No real features were seen other than a tall, real, real, real tall hair hairy thing that seemed to flow, uh, he said, and it ran like it was gliding on air. It was not human, he said. It couldn't be. He went on and on about his experience and that of others he had heard of over the 40-plus years of living in the area, 
Some of the stories he told came from local natives still around the area who are, in fact, a little reluctant to tell their stories and experiences to most people, especially outsiders. <coughs> he also mentioned that they are something that should, be not, uh, should not be trusted, something to steer clear of if possible. But if you can't, then just stand your ground and do not look at them directly. And at least that is what he was told to do. The conversation ended, I remembered, with that ominous thought and directions when coming across them. It hunts on my property. October and things were really busy on the farm slash ranch, if that is what you want to call it. I know I do. Anyways, I was real busy at the time, and but I also wanted to get some hunting done myself while the getting was good. I decided Saturday morning would be as good as any, as any day to get my tag filled, so off I went. <clears throat> I decided to hit the area just off my property, and given permission by my friend who owns the property I would be on, I headed out around 5 a.m. that morning. I was nearing the stream I was fishing on a couple weeks earlier where I'd heard the growl and grunts. By that time, I'd heard nothing in the early evenings and no sign of anything other than the deer I was hunting at the moment on my property. But things change rapidly sometimes. I remember the smell, a horrid dead carcass-like smell. I followed it until I saw in the middle of a clearing of trees that was left of a pr what was left of a pretty large buck. Well, half a one at least. The thing was ripped in half. You could tell by some of the edges around its upper chest. It was torn in half, period. The innards were gone, and so were the hind legs and the front left one. Whatever took this thing down seemed to have snapped its neck as the head was now back, uh, face backward and literally tore in half itself. And at that thought, or guess, I started looking around me. <coughs> no footprints, no nothing, not even any morning forest sounds can be heard at that moment, just my heart starting to beat loudly in my chest. I decided to leave and do my hunting elsewhere. I was not, and am still not afraid to be out in the woods today, but even after seeing this Bigfoot thing, <clears throat> even after seeing this Bigfoot thing, but I will leave an area if I know they are present. They are a wild animal. You can tell by their eyes that they are wild, unpredictable, yet highly intelligent as well. I left. And that was that for nearly three weeks. I told my friend what I found on his property. He called it a cougar problem and left it at that. Halloween was never that scary. About two days before Halloween that year, my first and only sighting would be a pretty amazing and horrific one all at the same time of these creatures. I had got my hunting done a week before and just in time as the scream started up again from the ridge line across the way. However, <clears throat> I noticed that they were closer than before, much lower along the ridge. I don't know if you know this, but Shamal area is known for its high country feel, but it is thick with forest. Well, thicker than other high country areas in Oregon. Whatever it was, screaming had now moved lower, as I said, into a strip of timber that ran across the lower part of that ridge. It was no more than a mile and a half from my land, at best. <clears throat> We got rid of most of our pumpkins, and we're still s selling turkey, beef, and chicken, especially turkey. I decided to work late one evening as we had some family come in unexpected unexpectedly and leave the next day. They were just passing through and wanted to say hello and catch up for a night. So the next day I got started a little late and figured I'd work on into the evening. After dinner, I headed out towards the pen full of turkey when this sense of fear all of a sudden overwhelmed me. I looked up. There was a giant of a creature staring at me as it cleared the fence without even a leap or a jump. It just stepped over it. It was at least eight plus feet tall, dark reddish brown hair, and dark wrinkled skin, not quite black, but close. It looked like a giant mountain gorilla in the face, except for the eyes. They were large, round, and there was a flicker of red in them. They also scared me as they seemed to pierce right through me especially when I saw the mouth open with its large blocked teeth clenched together as it gave, as it made a sort of grimace. I did not notice until the moment I remembered to not look directly at them. <clears throat> but, as I looked down, it was holding two of my turkeys, one in each hand. 
I have to say, it was gross, bloody, and seriously gruesome as I watched the lifeless birds being squeezed so hard around their necks the blood was oozing out of them. I did not look at it in the face again after I saw that bloody mess in its gigantic hands. However, I noticed that from the shoulders down this thing was a collection of massive muscle. Pure power was all I could think at the time. It was bent at the waist the whole time, and the hair was hair, not fur, but three to four inch long flowing reddish brown hair that covered everything but some of the face. It was not quite dark yet, and I was close enough to hear this thing breathing heavily as well. <coughs> it grunted first, then, as if the gates of Hades itself were opened. It screamed so loud at me that I fell to my knees shaking. I'm not sure about that infrasound, infrasound stuff I hear about here and there, but if it's true, I felt it at that moment. By the time I finally realized I was on the ground, I looked up to see nothing, just turkey, pen, and fence. Gone, baby, gone. For weeks or a couple months after that, I had found two or more deer mangled near or on my property. However, because it had come across me and I him, I think it steered clear of the actual farm itself and my animals. Maybe it had another run-in before me with someone who shot at it. I don't know. What I do know, however, is that it took no more of my livestock and stayed away from the house. Up until now, I have not heard any more screams since that year. Just the sounds of what I've, I've known up here until that day. Thanks for letting me share, Dave. Howard.